When you try to play Greyzone Warfare, does your game look like this? Yeah, well, we've all been going through it, except for the legends that have the mythical RTX 4090. So in this video, I will actually show you why your PC is struggling to run the game and how to best optimize it so you can get the best possible performance you can get. So let's begin by explaining what some of the more common issues are in the game and why this is happening. First of all, the game runs in Unreal Engine 5, which is Epic Games' latest game engine and can be very demanding, depending on the type of game that is being made on it. Greyzone Warfare is a game that focuses on graphical fidelity and realism, as it is an in-depth tactical shooter, much like Escape from Tarkov. This will be a very good thing in the future though, as the game has a lot of room for improvement and the game engine can be very optimized given some time and dedication by the devs. For now though, Greyzone is still in early access and noticeably so. It is full of stutters, performance issues and server crashes. Let's get into why some of the issues exist and how you can optimize your game to run as smooth as possible while the developers work on updates, hotfixes and new content for the game. Before we do that, be sure to subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed this video or if it helped you achieve what you wanted to achieve. I create FPS guides on some games I enjoy and play various games on stream as well as do challenges with my viewers and a lot of giveaways. With that out of the way, the first thing we have is stuttering. Greyzone is full of it. Everywhere. <laughs> the reason this is happening is because the game has some form of shader optimization that needs to be completed, much like Call of Duty Modern Warfare. While in Call of Duty, it shows the exact percentage this game doesn't yet and can cause a lot of stuttering as you enter new zones, climb into helicopters or get to a location that needs to be rendered before entering. This can widely not be helped yet as it is something that the devs need to work on but the best you can do right now is to have the game on an SSD or an NVMe drive instead of the usual hard drive. Let me know if you still have a hard drive for your backup games on your computer in the comments down below. The second thing is overall low performance even if you have a pretty beefy system. There have been some tests that were made on the current performance of the game and it was found that the GTX 1060 had similar performance to the RTX 3080 Ti which is crazy considering the huge performance difference between the two graphics cards. But here are some in-game settings that I have played with that helped my game run at a stable frame rate and made a pretty big difference in the amount of stuttering that I have experienced. First of all, go into the game settings by pressing escape and clicking on the settings cog. Then go to your graphic settings. You want to change your window mode to full screen or windowed full screen as normal windowed mode adds a bit of input latency to the game. Next up, you want to change the display resolution to your native screen resolution or if you have a lower end graphics card, you can even set it to 1600x900 or 1280 by 720 Just remember that setting the display resolution to a lower than your native resolution will increase the performance but decrease the visual quality quite a lot. Then I would suggest setting your field of view or FOV to between 50 and 60 as it makes the game just a little bit more immersive and setting your FOV to a high number like 75 might cause the game to need to take up more of your resources to render every frame, thus decreasing the performance. Next up is VSync. This setting tries to force the FPS to be at maximum the same as your refresh rate in order to reduce any screen tearing which is when you're seeing lines on your screen because of the difference between the game's FPS and your monitor's refresh rate. I would recommend keeping that off since it adds a bunch of latency to your game unless you need it to stop the screen tearing. The next four settings brightness, contrast, saturation and gamma are set at personal preference. They are just there for some color correction and have little to no difference in performance. I set mine to the values on the screen as it makes the world look just a little bit more alive than it normally is. Moving on to the frame rate limit, I would suggest setting it to either 60 FPS if you are getting close to or around 60 frames per second or on 120 if you are hovering around 120 FPS. This helps the game to be less stuttery since it doesn't need to use your full system all the time. Then I would recommend keeping the background frame rate limit to 30 FPS. This will help you if you want to use another program or do something else on your computer in the background so the game doesn't hog all of the performance while you are busy and make your PC sluggish. Next up we have the quality settings. Let's move past 3D resolution, we will come back to that later just in a bit. 
So starting with global illumination, I would recommend keeping that on low. This setting controls how light bounces in the game, but I have seen little to no difference between the low and epic settings, except for the fact that I lose just a bunch of FPS. Then we have shadow quality, which I also set to low, since the shadows in the game already looks pretty good and increasing it gives little to no extra value but costs a lot of performance. Then we have texture resolution. This setting affects the physical resolution of all textures in the game, so you would think that it greatly reduces the performance, but you should be able to set this setting to medium. With the tests that I have done, there is a negligible performance cost and added textures are always a good thing. Effects quality I would recommend you keep on low, unless you have a pretty decent graphics card. This setting will only really come into play when you are in town in the game and there's a bunch of bullets, explosions or other effects in the area, and can have a significant impact on your performance at the worst possible time, like when you need to survive a battle with another player or NPC. Next up we have the reflections quality, which I would also recommend setting to low, as it only really makes a difference when set to epic, then it renders all the reflections on windows, water and mirrors, but at a huge cost to performance. Lastly in the quality tab we have the foliage quality. This setting controls the level of detail or the LOD in the foliage around you in the environment, but as the game already looks pretty good and is based in a setting where there is that much foliage, I would recommend keeping that on low. With that we are moving on to the post processing tab where we have the first setting post processing which controls the detail of all the other settings in this category. Since post processing have such a big impact on performance I would suggest just keeping this setting on low. Then with motion blur I would ironically set this to low instead of none, as the very small amount of motion blur that it adds actually helps smooth out the game a bit, as your GPU doesn't need to render as much when you're moving around. Next up we have the sharpening setting, this is personal preference but I have found my sweet spot at 40, I feel like the game looks just a little bit weird at more than 40 and a bit blurry at less than 40. For the colorblind modes, you can set this to any one of the modes that fit with your colorblindness if you are colorblind, but there have been some tests that show that the colorblind modes might affect performance just a little bit, so just test it out if you need it. Moving on to the advanced tab, this is where my specific tests have become quite interesting. DLSS is recommended for Nvidia's RTX 4000 series cards and high-end RTX 30 series cards. FSR was recommended for AMD's cards and anything lower than Nvidia's lower end RTX 30 series cards. My personal tests have shown that TSR actually gave me the best performance on the epic anti-aliasing preset. With TSR enabled you can also set the 3D resolution manually and I've set mine to 67% which is the same as it would have been on FSR and the DLSS's quality settings. You can play around with those to see which one gives you the best performance but I believe it highly differs from system to system. So if you have an Nvidia graphics card you can keep the Nvidia Reflex low latency on off as it adds just a little bit of stuttering on my side personally which was kinda weird to see. Or if you have a weaker CPU that is bottlenecking your system you can set that to on plus boost. That should help to even out your latency just a little bit. But if you have an AMD GPU or used FSR, you can enable Fidelity FX frame generation and that will increase your FPS by a lot, but it will introduce a lot of input latency, so I have preferred it off, even though I had lower FPS without it. When you have done all the steps above, play the game for about 30 minutes if you can, so that some of the textures and shaders have loaded, and you can get an accurate measurement of the performance you are getting. Don't worry if the performance isn't all that great yet though, the game is still in very very early stages as the developers have mentioned something about the game only being at about 20% done, so there will be a lot of performance improvements to come, as well as a lot of new features, content and more. If you have anything to add that I might have missed, please let me know and others in the comments as it might help someone out a bunch and you might even be able to make someone's day. If you don't have anything to add, please leave a smiley emoji in the comments for some engagement and be sure to check out the live stream that I did when I played the game for the first time. With that being said, I have one question for all of you. Do you wanna play?